people. And nothing was clearer than when they referred to red tape, but what it meant was in future cutting the wages of Commonwealth cleaners. Now that was part of what happened last time. So why the dollars, why the dollar figures were higher, why the dollar figures were higher, the reality was they dressed up as deregulation, they dressed up as deregulation what actually amounted to cutting the wages of some of the lowest paid workers uh, and, and the very workers who cleaned the offices for the people who did it to them. And I do want to remind the House of what happened, because when this bill got to the Senate, we made clear that if our amendment was carried, we would insist on it, and the government ultimately accepted the amendment and we let the bills through in good faith, only to find that within, I think, 24 hours, they found another method to still cut the wages of Commonwealth cleaners. Now, if this government want to talk about the total savings, they need to be honest about the irrelevance of most of the measures that we talk about and the real harm that they've done against the lowest, some of the lowest paid workers in Australia. There is nothing this parliament should be proud of when the last repeal day meant future wage cuts for the people who serve all of us and every department in some of the lowest paid jobs. And to hear the interjections that have happened during this part of my speech from the parliamentary secretary saying, oh, it's all deals with unions, can I say the members of those unions are paid a lot less than us. The members of those unions are serving all of our offices and all of the public service and doing a hard day's work or a hard middle of the night work. Yep. And for their pay cut to be part of the fanfare of so-called getting rid of red tape shows a contempt for those individuals in a way that I had hoped this parliament would never show no matter who was in office. Exactly. It's one thing for them to say, for those opposite to say, well, they didn't agree uh, with those rules and they want there to be a tender process that allows the lowest bidder uh, whether or not they're keeping to the, to the guidelines to be the case. But to claim the audacity of claiming that, cutting, that cleaners getting better wages was an example of red tape. No, it wasn't red tape. It was their livelihood. It wasn't red tape and some small business burden. It was how much money the people who clean our offices have to take home. And the policy that the government adopted was bad enough. But to dress it up with the rhetoric of red tape, I've got to say, and I don't you know, use the term carefully in this place, but it was offensive. Yeah. It was just out and out offensive to claim that better wages for low paid cleaners mm. was an issue of red tape. Mm. And if the government wants to pursue lower wages for people, have the courage and the guts to do it head on. But don't have a situation where you dress it up as part of a red tape repeal, reach an agreement with the opposition and then find a side way of doing it anyway within 24 hours. So that you, are, you treat people with, the, the government treated people with contempt, they then did a deal that gave people hope and then within 24 hours they trashed the hope again. And in the rhetoric after said, oh, but everyone will still be paid the same amount at the moment. Well, they won't after the next tender. They won't after the next tender. And their wages will be cut because of a deliberate act of this government that was dressed up within the rhetoric of red tape repeal that the government did not have the courage to deal with head on. Cleaners should not be viewed, decent wages for cleaners should not be viewed as red tape. It never should have happened. The behaviour of the government on the last repeal day was appalling. And it's something uh, that will not only affect the view of people in the cleaning industry towards this government, it's something that will be attached to the character of this government for a very long time.